What is up guys? I'm on Chocolate Syrup and today we're back in Roblox Theme Park Tycoon 2. It's been a while and today it was really exciting because I logged on and I saw that there was a new update which is super cool. I'm a few hours late on it but that doesn't matter because I, I wanted to make sure I built this little structure here. I think it looks pretty cool. It's like a little DJ booth. You can already see some of the stuff that was added if you have a good eye. But I'll get to all that later. It's a relatively small update. No roller coaster, no new roller coasters or anything. However, the actual abilities that this will unlock, like the the different things you're able to do now with effects and all that, is really big. And this is something I've been waiting for for a long time. I've also been waiting for custom particles, but still none of that. Very unfortunate. But a particle update is really cool nonetheless because it's more alive like parks, which I think would be really nice. Anyways, to get straight into it, there's actually a new achievement which you're gonna need. It's called Activated. I'm just gonna close these. Shout out to these guys that are in my game. Um, it's called Activated and it's gonna give you a couple of things. It's gonna give you these buttons here. By the way, if you're wondering how to get activated, I'm gonna be posting a video at the same time as this video explaining how to get it so if you're watching this video the video is probably already up unless there was a delay now these are really cool so these buttons here allow you to activate certain types of things in other words lights most lights tnt which is insane and most emitters and you'll also be able to activate with this button, this sequencer thingy, which I'll get to in a second. We also have a timer here. The sequencer basically allows you to set a sequence of how you want things to run. You know, like if this happens, then this happens like over like a duration of time, almost like if anyone's ever done like animation or whatever, it's almost like that. And you'll see in a second. And then a timer, is just a reoccurring event, almost like a sequence, but it's reoccurring over and over again. And you could also set it so you can set it so it's periodic, or you could set it so it's a time of day thing. Although it is worth noting, you can't actually hook it up to the button, so this is always running at all times. Now, if you're not already too confused, because I might not be doing a good job explaining, let me actually show you how this all works. Most of these emitters work, I tested them. This one does not work, unfortunately. This, this particular smoke emitter does not work either, and the snow emitters don't work. I believe that's all of the emitters. I've tested a lot of them. So that's really unfortunate. Anyway, I'm just gonna take, let's just say the fire emitter, why not? And then we're gonna take this button in here. It doesn't, it doesn't actually have to be close to it or anything. I just want like, it to be on the screen. Anyways, so you're gonna click this. You're gonna set who you, who could use it. It could either be anyone who visits your park or you and other builders. You could choose. I'm just gonna keep it on anyone. And then I could change the color if I wanted to, obviously. And I'm gonna hit add. And then click this emitter right here. And it says that this turns the fire on, which this is something really important. When you're doing this, automatically, it makes it so the button turns it on. However, you could also set it so it turns it off or it fades, or just all these other things. And there's time and power, right? And uh, you're not gonna notice that if you haven't so the items on default because it's automatically running, you're not gonna notice anything happening. So make sure if you don't change any other settings in the button, if all you make it do is turn it on, make it so it starts off as off. That way it turns on and off. Or, if that's too confusing for you, Let's add another layer onto it. I'm gonna add the sequencer. Now with the sequencer, what I could do, I'm gonna remove this, and I'm just gonna turn this on just for demonstration purposes. Now I can go to the sequencer and you can see, here's the time of the sequencer, and it goes for a whole minute, which is crazy. And if you want, you could zoom in and out. Like this is, really really precise if you're concerned with timing or if you're not really too concerned with timing it's a quick and easy thing here this one actually goes higher than 60 which is interesting 
Anyways. Yes, that's the sequencer. I'm just gonna keep it at 100. Um, so yeah, you're gonna hit add, just like this. And click the emitter. And this one says on, right? However, let's say this fire emitter is on, but I don't want it to start off as on. I could actually turn it off there. Then I could add again, click the same emitter. And then afterwards, it turns on. And if you want to test it without the button, you can just hit play. And it'll show you as it's going through, which is super cool. Before you hit the button, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure the button is connected to the sequencer. So you're going to hit add on the sequencer. Hi, Kim, by the way. Last thing I need to get to is showing you how the timer works. This one's super easy. You just connect it to here. And the timer is activated, which happens every three seconds because it's periodic. I have it set to periodic. Default is just on, which is lame. So you're, you're, you're gonna wanna have it set to periodic so it is changing. Next you're gonna have it go off. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set it to off. That way periodically it turns off and it's gonna turn back on. And then three seconds off and then on. Now that you understand how to make these with the sequence, the button, and the timer, I'm gonna show you guys how I actually did these things here, I have a button, turn these guys on. I showed you how to do that. And I did the same thing, actually. The smoke emitter, I believe that's a button. No, it's the light button, Never mind. Whoops, I, I clicked the wrong button. I also have a, I have a light show, as you just saw, that happens. And that one's kind of interesting to set up, I'll show you that. That, the smoke emitter is basically the same thing as the fire. Actually, it is the same thing as the fire. That's the same way of doing it. The same with the TNT. Oh my god. I have to reset. Jesus Christ. Okay, never doing that again. So lights are really weird. The color of the light isn't actually gonna dictate- Oh my god. The color of the light isn't actually gonna dictate... Like... What the light looks like, for some reason. The actual button will. Which leads me to another thing you can actually do. You can actually change the colors of... Lights with buttons? Actually, I should probably show you guys how to do that. That's probably a good idea. I am going to make a light here. And I'll have it off. And I'm going to connect it to this button here. I'm going to hit add. There. And you see here, for some reason, it's automatically blue. It was set to white, but it's automatically blue for some reason. So you're going to want to change it unless you want the blue. You're going to want to change it in here. Oh, right. I, I forgot. I see it. I missed a really important step. My bad. I missed an important step where I actually... Oh, this, it kind of looks weird there. Uh, I don't know where I want to put this. I'll just put it there. Why not? Why not? I could step on it, press the buttons, whatever. Oh, whoops. Okay, there we go. Yep, I got it right. I was confused for a second. I'm just gonna click it twice or whatever. Here, it's gonna be pink, because why not? And then here, it's gonna be more of a purple. It's not gonna be a great change. It's probably not a good idea to use it for this video to showcase, but I'm doing it anyways. Gonna add the sequencer, if you guys remember, and there we go. As you can see, that was actually really hard to see. I'm gonna change that to something really easier to see, like red. Bam, there we go. As you can see, you can change the colors of orange. There's so much possibilities with this, it's insane. Like, I was so happy with myself when I made this little light show thing. I'm just gonna show you guys me hooking up buttons, cause why not? I'm gonna set this spotlight to the timer. I wanted to do time of day activation, but I really couldn't figure out how to do it. So I'm just gonna go with periodic. And add. Add. And every once in a while it's gonna turn on. Which is sweet. 
and then these right here. I'm. I guess I'll set them to this button. No, that's the wrong button. Never mind. I already used up all the buttons. Dang. You know what? I could set them to the same button. Nothing wrong with that. You could set as many things as you want to the same button. Well, not as many things, but a lot of things. To the same button. So I'm actually gonna do that. Turn this water meters on. And bam. There we go. It's that easy. And something worth noting, if you're wondering, every time you click the button, it restarts. It like completely restarts. You don't understand what I mean? Here we go. As you can see, it blew up after a few seconds after touching the button. But if I keep it spamming it, it's never going to blow up because it's going to restart the delay that I have. And to do this, I just put TNT explode after a few seconds. Uh, other than that, not much was added. There's a couple changes like you might have noticed. This awful arrow system. I don't like how it feels at all, but that's okay. And also you could paint a few items that you weren't able to paint before. Like these rocks were never paintable, but you can now. Which I think is pretty cool. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention actually. Is you can activate things using your tracks. Like for a roller coaster. You can't do it here. I almost forgot about that. You can't do it here actually. You have to just build your ride. Whatever. They make it so. I guess that piece would be the one that activates. I guess. I don't really know. So you're gonna go to appearance. Then you're gonna go to triggers. And I'll just set it so. I'll set it so the fire goes up and down. Because why not? So this is going to open up like a whole new world of possibilities for coasters. Being able to ride and then the world around you is interacting with you is so cool. So as you saw it turned off and then back on after I rode over that piece. Anyways, I believe that's it for the update. If I missed anything, be sure to let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this update and think it's really cool and you're going to use it a ton, let me know your ideas in the comments below because I'm interested. I have a few ideas myself, but I'm not going to spoil them. I want to make them first and then show you guys because I think that'll be a lot more fun. Anyways, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to smash like and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.